All right, chip of the day. We have a very fancy one today, a 74 LS 593. 593. Okay, what is it? Well, it's a counter of sorts. So I think the best thing to do is take a look at the uh, look at the diagram for what this thing does. Let's see. We have the 593. I think the data sheets for a 592, 593. This is a 590. Ooh, see, it's so big. The 593. Look at this. Look at this. It's complicated. All right. But we'll try to break it down and make sense of it. All right. So it is an 8-bit counter, all right? And so where's the counterpart? Well, the counterpart is these flip-flops here. So there's eight flip-flops. So these guys go flipping a flopping. And there's a clock in so they can count, all right? So that's the first thing we want to do is make it count. Now, the funny thing about the part is where's the output? And you go, well, the output's on a flip-flop is this side. And then the outputs go to this... Uh, gate here that tells you when you have an overflow condition all right but then where else do they go it doesn't make any sense there's yeah there's a bunch of funniness going on right but the thing that we're interested in is um, there's a bunch of pins here labeled Q A through QH so those are our outputs but then there's A through H and those are our inputs so these are both inputs and outputs. You can see the little arrow here goes both ways. So these are bi-directional. So you have to tell the part which direction do you want to use it. Do you want to use it as an input? Which means you can load a count in. You can load a starting point in. Or do you want to have it just output data and then you can just read it out. So we want to do just output first. Okay, so how do we change the output? Well, the output comes from this chip right here. This chip looks like an inverter with a little line coming out. Well, that's a tri-state device. And depending on the value of this little side, side line, that tells you whether this thing is just outputting or it's tri-stating. We want it to be outputting. Well, if we want it to output, then we have to make sure that these lines here enable the output, which means that we have to have G and not G both valid. So if they're both high, then this is high. High comes in here. That makes this low. We have high, low. This is an AND gate, so that won't work. We actually have to have this pin high, this pin low. If this pin is low, then it's high. Then we have a high, high. We have a high. And then we enable the output. All right. Then, so now we can configure it as an output. Now we want it to count. Well, we need to bring in a clock, okay? clock is here. Bring on the clock. Well, the clock has an enable as well. All right. And so we look at the enable. If you look at the enable logic here, if these, uh, let's see here, 14, 15, I believe that they both float. It will, it will pass through. Let's see if I'm right about that. All right. So we have an OR gate here. This is an odd core. So if this is low, then it'll, it'll go through. Or if this is high, then this is low and it'll go through. So I think if we float both of those, the clock will work. And uh, we're not going to worry about the load yet. And we're not going to worry about the load clock yet. So if this thing, as is now, should count. I have the outputs enabled. I have the clock enabled. It should count. So let's go over and take a look. All right. Um, it seems to be counting. Um, I just have some LEDs hooked to those output lines and you can see here that it counts up to FF and then resets and goes back around. Um, the clock chip that I'm using, it, I've, I've uh, introduced on a different video. This is a 74LS625 and um, I have a, what do I have in here? I have a 2.2 microfarad capacitor as the, uh, as the external capacitor makes it clock slow. So we can take a look at it. All right, so it's clocking nice and slow now, and uh, everything seems to be fine. Now, the other mode that you might want to use this in, right now it's, uh, it's uh, counting up to 256 and then resetting. It just wraps around and around and around. Every time it wraps around, it gives an overflow condition on this pin here. So if you just want to divide by 256, 
you can just hook the part up and it'll run with a divide by 256, okay? What we want it to do is when it gets an overflow condition, we want it to create a load condition. So whenever it gets done, we want it to load. So instead of counting from zero to 255, we want it to count from say uh, 32 up to 255. That'll be a, a, a different count or 64 or 200. You can make it count to anything you want by loading in a condition, all right? So instead of the output lines, we wanna make them input lines. So we'll remove this wire. And now they're input lines and these uh, LEDs will no longer be functional, all right? So now these lines become input lines, all right? I'm going to ground one of the input lines so we know we don't have FF being loaded in each time. So I'm just gonna put a ground here. I'll ground pin three. Pin three is the uh, bit three. Uh, maybe I should go up to pin four. Yeah, I'm going to pin four. That'll make it more relevant. All right, so put it up here to pin four. Now we need it to get into a reset condition. All right. So let's uh, let's monitor the output here, and we want to. Let's see. It's still counting. All right, uh, well, let's see here. The first thing I did was I uh, changed the capacitor here to 120 picofarads, so everything is running really fast now, so I can see, I don't have to wait around on the oscilloscope here. So we're running fast clocks now. So we're gonna be looking at two signals. We're gonna be looking at the clock, so this is the input clock. And then the other trace that we're looking at here is the overflow condition, all right? So every time we get an overflow, we'll get a negative pulse. And so how often are we getting negative pulses? There we go, we're getting one, two, three, and there's a whole bunch of clocks in between these two. And there's actually 256 clocks between these two pulses, okay? And so 256 clocks. So right now it's acting as a divide by 250, divide by 256, all right? Now, if we can get it to load, instead of counting from zero to 255, it's going to count from, say, 64 to 255. And so the distance between these two will shorten up. There'll be only, only a certain number of clocks now. Instead of 256 clocks, it will say be 64 clocks or something between, between these two. We'll have to set up some kind of load condition, right? So let's see if we can hit up the load condition and get a different divide by uh, function of this chip. And I'll need to add some wires and figure out where they go. Just a second. Let me first demonstrate on the oscilloscope uh, that we are doing what I expected it to do, all right? So we have, um, and they're kind of hard to see now because they're kind of small. We have these little negative going pulses here, okay? But they're happening in a shorter time frame now, okay? And so you can look at this. We're now at 51 kilohertz, so these got faster. So if I move... I'm gonna move a pin and watch the output. I'm gonna move this pin. And you can see that they're closer now. And here they're closer. And here they're closest. All right, so let's zoom in on some of those. So here's a particular divide by. So this is divide by two, right? Divide by two. Now I'm gonna go here, and now it's gonna be divide by uh, one, two, three, four, divide by four. And now I go here, it should be divided by eight. Well, anyway, and then divide by 16, and you get the idea, right? And so how am I doing that? Okay. Okay, so we want to create a load condition, all right? And so we're going to load in a value, all right? So I was loading in, when I grounded pin one, uh, it was divided by two, and I grounded pin two, it was divided by four, divided by eight divided by 16, okay? We need to create the load condition. Well, the load happens with this line here, number nine, load, okay? And so load I have connected to RCO, which is the overflow condition. So whenever it gets an overflow, it says load the new count in, all right? So instead of starting at zero, it's gonna load in some count and start from there. So uh, pin, pin 11 is now connected to load, all right? And so now it's going, except we need to clock this uh, D, D latch, okay? It has a, a clock on the input and we need to clock the value that we have into that latch and then it'll get loaded. 
So we need to clock this first. Well, I'm just going to run this clock here. Okay. That clock has an enable. So I had to, I had to ground pin 17 to enable this clock. And then I connected clock to clock. So pin 13 is the clock input and our clock is the 16. I just connected pins 13 and 16, grounded pin 17, grounded one of these pins, and now it does a load condition and counts by a different value. So there you go. Um, I'm not going to draw it out. Um, one of the things that I try to get across to my channel is do. And I try to get people to do instead of just watch and copy. Okay. So don't watch and copy do. Okay. I think if you can figure this complicated uh, diagram out and make it do what I just did, you're going to learn a lot. You're going to learn a lot because there's a whole bunch going on in here and learning about tri-states and clocks and enables and go about it systematically, right? Like I did. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is just try to get it to do something at all. Get the clock working, monitor something that you believe should be toggling. Oh, then I want to enable the outputs and so learn how to do that, right? Um, oh, and now I want it to load. Well, what is a load? Oh, and then try to figure out the uh, the logic of this thing and then figure out how to program it. Um, so I think it'd be a, I think it would be a great exercise. You saw me do it. If I can do it, you can do it. So yeah, go try.